Welcome to The Life, an E! News media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. In this, the school's 150th year, our new name pays homage to the illustrious past of Brooklyn Friends and The Life, the student-run newspaper that had a 60-year run. Recently, the Upper School History Department took the 11th grade to visit Brooklyn Museum's Legacy of Lynching exhibition as part of the history of the Americas curriculum, specifically reflecting on the Civil War, Reconstruction, and the Civil Rights Movement. When I am able to empathize with those oppressed by a situation in history, my understanding goes beyond facts and statistics and recognizes the humanity and relatability of the event, one upper schooler reflected. Photos courtesy of Dr. John DeGraff. On today's show, our alumni reflection will be courtesy of the Honorable Dina Douglas Patterson from the class of 1983. On the Student Voices segment, Hasanti will clue us into the significance of something called Bojack Horseman. And on the big story, we'll feature Tony Saul and the weekly preschool sing. But first, these upcoming announcements. Come to school looking your best for the BFS at 150 All School Photo on Wednesday, November 1st at 11 a.m. Saturday, November 4th is the annual Young Woman of Strength Conference for 7th to 12th graders at 116 Lawrence Street. On Tuesday, November 7th from 11 to 5 p.m. will be preschool and lower school parent conferences. There will be no school for preschool and lower school students. But child care will be provided during the conference time. BFS families are invited to help with the Quaker Cemetery cleanup on Saturday, November 11th in Prospect Park. The fall season is upon us. Basketball, track, swimming, or squash. For all 7th through 12th graders, join the team and show your blue pride. Hi, my name is Asante and I'm a senior at BFS and what I'll be talking about is Netflix's Bojack Horseman. Uh, Bojack Horseman was created in 2014 and it follows a humanoid horse named Bojack and his crazy antics throughout his life as a mid-40s old movie character and what he tries to do is he tries to navigate his depression, his anxiety, along with his friends Todd, Princess Carolyn, Diane, and Mr. Peanut Butter. The newest season, season 4, it came out in the summer of two, the beginning of 2017 and what it does is it follows several different problems affecting the United States now such as feminism, fracking, and different political issues and following the Las Vegas shooting one of the episodes actually talks about how our thoughts and prayers aren't enough and that things continue to go on and that we do need to take a minute to stop and to actually pay attention to the things that are going on. In episode 2 it follows a depressed firefly and how depression can be unseen and unknown. Uh, the cartoon itself is massively done and the main character is voiced by Jack Arnett so I personally believe that this cartoon is specifically made for the youth and it helps us to understand things through the lens of a cartoon. Someone commenting like, oh, well, that girl is black. And I was, and I like immediately shot back like, you know, um, yes, I am. Like, are you, what do you need to know about me? And then that was like the end of it. I don't think that anybody ever really commented on it. And it's not because there was some tension. It was just more of a curious, it was an unfamiliar. Do you remember uh, how old you were? I was probably like five. I was a person. <laughs> and that I wasn't, you know, like Dina the black girl. Well, I was the lead in the play. I was like the captain of the basketball team. I mean, there was like very few areas of the school that I didn't touch. We were encouraged to be part of whatever community there was, whether it's the local community or even for me to be part of 
People were curious as to what was actually happening in my community, in my life. I described what I did when I went with my cousins or my family to do stuff. I had sleepovers at my house, it was much more of a production, but you know, to, to get all the way there. I also took this class um, from Martin Moore where we would read the New York Times. And we would get on the train <laughs> and we were like folding our New York Times, you know, and people were like definitely looked at us like, what is yeah <laughs> what are they doing and why are they doing that so but that was just it was it was so different and so creative but like carry it carried with you you still you read the paper after that i still read the paper What, when was the first time you sung for the kids at the school? At this school? Yeah. I think the first year I was ever here. It was part of the deal. It was teach middle school history and English and math and sing with the preschool. Because I'd been doing a concert here, fundraiser, for years as a parent before I was a staff member. So this Christmas, this winter break, uh, for the Winter Fair, it'll be the 26th time, but it's about the 30th year. <laughs> I think there are preschoolers who have had children in the, in the preschool. So I'm on my second generation at least. Uh, I'm not scared, it's a big hit. And the parent requested in the lobby said that her child really, really wants to listen to the water, which we're going to do anyway, so that's good. And that's very active, too. Hello! Wait for the other guys. Here comes some more. For three decades, Tony Saul has been entertaining the preschool with his weekly sing-alongs. Let's listen in. Yeah. You ready to be scary? Yeah. Okay. I went into a big dark house. I went there by myself. It looked to me as if it had a ghost on every shelf. A friend of mine was hiding there, and then I saw her head. She jumped right out and shouted, <laughs> That wasn't very scary. You have to scare the grown-ups. We'll do that again. She jumped right out and shouted, <laughs> That was pretty terrifying. <laughs> and a spider on my leg, on my leg. Now creep it up just a little way until it's on your... Okay, you got it? There's a... You can even have two spiders on both knees. There's a spider on my knee, on my knee. Oh, no! A spider on my knee, on my knee. Oh, no! Oh, I'm glad he's not a bee. There's a spider on my knee. There's a spider on my knee, on my knee. Oh, no! Here we go, ready? Put your hand behind your ear. And it goes. Listen to the water, listen to the water, roaring down the river. Listen to the water, listen to the water, rolling down the river. I saw some fish by the waterside. Poof, poof, or gills, whatever you like. Whatever kind of fish. I saw some fish by the waterside. No bubbles. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I saw a whole lot of fish by the waterside. Look at this, sardines are good. Oh, oh, by the waterside. Oh, oh, bright and shiny new shoes. New shoes, new shoes. Walking down the street. I bought them on the internet. 
they came right in the mail. It's true, I like the style, I like the fit, and plus they were on sale. 20% off, guys. <laughs> New shoes, you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, sing it. Then you really are, you know it, sing it, sing it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Well, we'll let the fourth grade annual Halloween dance end our first episode of The Life. Thank you all for tuning in, and remember to let your life speak.